Hey guys, it's Chris, and we're back again with more goodies. What do I got this time? You keep opening mail. Um, a couple of you reached out, and I thank you, and sent me a couple things. You've been really helping out. I appreciate it greatly. Um, from Andreas, thanks. Uh, we talked on the old Discord, well, that's my YouTube page, and he said that he had some extra uh, CPU relocators for the Amiga 1000 and here it is this is a CPU relocator for the Amiga 1000 um, several of you have expressed concern about my uh, Lorena Bobbitt and uh, going on the Pi 3A there to give her a little notch so it would fit in this will scoot over and back your 68,000 to allow you to better uh, shove this in there without having to cut Scoots it over a little bit with this angle right here. There you go. See that? And uh, I will... It's got some pin headers that need to be put on for the 68,000. SIL turn pins. Even came with a socket. Isn't that grand? Check that out. Cool. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Next, this is something that I purchased. And I reached out a long time ago to Rob Smith. Hey, Rob. And he is the creator of the uh, little USB board that you can plug into a special USB floppy and then run some programs on a Windows machine that allows you to natively read Amiga disks on your computer. Just pop them in there. And it does some magic. I don't know. We're going to figure that bad boy out right now. So what I had to do was spend a boatload of money on a $25 part, or 25 pound part. So it was like 35 bucks. But for some reason, the United States Postal Service and Royal Mail charged me 50 pounds to ship it. I don't know what's going on. I guess they needed a raise or whatever. You get this little uh, piece of cardboard and this thing. This is a, uh, let's open this bad boy up. It's a USB cable with a special little board on the end and that board will plug into the header of the USB drive that I bought and not all USB floppy disks are the same so we got a uh, welcome to the drawbridge that's what it's called your long-awaited adapter for compatible slimline floppy drives this is a ready-built solution terms and conditions bunch of legal stuff the included board should only take a minute or two to install inside your drive step by step instructions are on this website. Let's go to it. So it's got a little video on the Arduino floppy dude. I'm not even going to watch the video. I know how to take apart a floppy drive. I hope. So the floppy drive I bought was on eBay for $12. Don't know the brand. It's got some old Windows 98 2000 Me XP Mac. I'll get a model number off of it in a second. Came with a came with a bag that it wasn't in. And a cable that's wrapped up in there. Don't need that. So it's a regular old floppy drive. I guess I should make sure it works. Entirely too big. So I have one screw to remove in the bottom. Now I should be able to slide this forward and it should come off. All right. So what I'm looking for is right here, this ribbon cable. See how this is like this? This is what I'm replacing, this module right here. So being that I can't see to save my life, lift up on the thing here and get it out. It is your standard lift up clips just like a Amiga keyboard. Here's your old ribbon. Here's the new ribbon. Push that one down and then this one will go back in the floppy drive and that's it hardware wise. Tuck your cable. I got a little extra cable so I'm going to kind of figure out a mounting way to mount this and not run it into the screw okay so here's how it fits in there it's just this little board this long cable and what I'm doing is I'm giving it the old tuck and it has a little USB thing which I'm going to shove in the actual USB hole making sure that my screw hole is okay so I can put the lid back on okay that was really fun the stupid wires wanted to keep coming out the cable wanted to keep twisted now the device itself was cheap it was the shipping that just ate me for breakfast. If you're in the UK, you're kind of in the house because 25 bucks 
25 pounds, so 30 three dollars for me and you're in the house let's see if I still got a floppy disk working cool alright that's installed this address and you got download a uh, driver pinball fantasies disk one Windows 10 PC alright there it goes so it is running a test and I apologize if that looks like Dookie. Yes. Track zero is found. Yes. Remove this drive. Alright. Reinsert the disk. Your disk drive is working fine. Yay! Nope. No test right. Alright. So, once again, using this floppy drive dude, I'm going to choose... Uh, I'm just going to give it a name. We're going to say... Uh, pb1.adf save make sure you choose the right com port and then copy disk there it goes son of a booger so it's writing reading the disk it's going to be in my hand right here you can see the light doing its thing sorry about my clothes but I do have pants on today that's good it is actually doing okay Now, how are we going to test this? We're actually going to test it two ways. So this is reading a disk. I am then going to put a blank floppy in, and we're going to write the same disk. I have some gray ones here. And then we're going to boot said disk in the Amiga 1000, 3000, 6, whatever, in an Amiga. Look at that. Focus there, brother. Your ADF was read successfully. Cool. So now, back this truck up just a tad. I want to take this disc out, set it right here. We're going to grab a disc. Here's a blank 3M double-sided double-density disc. Putting that in. Now I'm going to go right disc. PB1.ADF. We're going to say right it pauses for a second. There it goes. It's writing the disc. Cylinder 1. My main benefit is reading. I want to read a lot of my discs that I cannot find, either in the archive or online. So installation, super fast. But it is still a floppy. Hope you got some time, but you can do it on a PC, Windows 10 in this case. All right. Here's the drive. Mega 600 on the top with an actual floppy drive. Couldn't find what I do with my power supply, so we're using the original power supply. Same monitor. I'm going to borrow the mouse here if it'll fit. You've got to be kidding me. Dang it. Mega 600 mouse is special. So I'll use the, the old keyboard trick to do that. While I look for my disc, I'm not going to have any sound because I didn't hook up the RCA. I just want to make sure it works and ask me for disc 2. But the cool thing is, is that it works. I read and created a Amiga disc natively on a PC in several minutes and I did not have to uh, do anything special. Here's the disc. I'm going to put the actual Amiga disc in there, but for creating ADFs if you're going to use these digitally on your GoTech and you have uh, three. Oh, that's three. and you have something that you want to make digital and you have physical discs like I have here or wherever back up your workbench discs you can do that and you can do it without an Amiga for your emulation so say you, you sold your Amiga years ago you got a box of discs and you want to run WinUAE and play with them how do you get those discs in? Well, you can make ADFs of them. You can use this disc in WinUAE by choosing the Arduino COM port device as the, uh, AD, or as the floppy drive and use it natively on your WinUAE environment. So, But I do like the idea of making the actual ADFs and actually making discs out of my ADFs 
to use them on a real Amiga. So that is really cool. So Rob Smith, thank you for making this. I will link in the description down below where you can purchase one of these. 25 British dollars, pounds. And it's totally functional. If I had sound, sound would be totally working. I'm going to let my ball drop. Hope maybe. Boop. Cool. So, totally works. What did that take me? That's probably my shortest Amiga video ever. Put the screw back in there. If, like it says in the video, if you ever want to return to a USB floppy drive, you just put this back in here and you have yourself a regular drive. This is this drive. Pause it. Look at the screen. Whatever. This is the one that I bought. If you go on eBooger and you look for a drive, make sure it's got this crap. I did notice that in my video, in the video from Rob, it had this on the box. His had this on the box. So when you're doing this, make sure you get the cheap Chinesium FD05 PUB. Uh, part number 19308801-19. It's just the old Chinesium drive. Any drive with a ribbon cable will work. Most of the newer drives on eBay listed as new. Not the somebody has one like me and just sold it on eBay and you'll be good to go reading or writing ADFs on your PC or using this in WinUAE. That is that. We can now read and write floppies natively on the Windows machine. I got a lot of that to do. Not that it would be a problem. I do have a bunch of Amigas lying around here that I can read some old floppies on. You know, everybody's got a shoebox full of backups that we... uh use from time to time or need to read they could be dirty you need some discs to, that's probably enough discs to make the workbench 3.2 set you know we need 50. okay so i fired up win uae i right clicked on it and ran it in the old administrator mode i went to configurations and i loaded one of my configurations here this controllers drop down to arduino enabled we're going to do com5 we're going to say start this is 3.9. What about the secret of Monkey Island? Oh man, do I want to boot that sucker? Let's uh, reset here. This is the secret of Monkey Island, which is working. So far, so good. You know, there was an option here I missed. Right here, replace drive DF0 fast. You can replace any drive you want with fast or more compatibility. I just chose fast. Awesome. Sound isn't too bad either. I don't have a controller hooked up. But that is cool. So that's what we're doing. And she's running fine. Don't have a joystick hooked up, but All right, guy brush three wood. Cool. So as y'all can tell by my shirt, I got an old Retro Rewind shirt. And check out RetroRewind.ca because a lot of people have been asking me, hey, Chris, where do I get this thing? I always see you saying you got this Chinesium pin straightener. But where'd you get it at? I'll tell you what, right here, Retro Rewind. If you, if you click on goodies, you'll see it right here. Dip chip straightener, $8 US. Or is that Canadian? Canadian. Your dollars. Got a queen on it. Anyway, you can see it's a little better quality than this cheap Chinesium hollow thing. Solid. Spring loaded on both sides. $8. And if you use my code, no code, or go to retro rewind slash Chris Edwards, you can save an additional 10%. No sh So that eight bucks is like eight cents in the American monies. Because I think there's some conversions going on with the Canadian dollars. Canadian dollars. So check them out, RetroRewind.ca, for your pin straighteners and other Commodore 8-bit and Amiga goodies. Stay tuned for more. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.